uh, cook time what would be my arguments what would be my arguments Sir, h1 h2 and a blank array no you know we do lists right we do lists so what, what these are sets of items isn't it so oh. what are we going to store how are we going to do the recursive definition what is the at least the parameters and the arguments Can somebody suggest what would be the arguments? You all have solved the problem, right? So you all will know what you have done. See, I'm talking about a problem that you all have all solved. So what have you done? How would you define it recursively? That was the first part of the question, right? Uh, sir, I used the sets H1, H2 and a blank list right so so let us say l1 contains the food items chosen in h1 right and so let us let us define two lists l1 and l2 is that what you're saying that i will have two lists l1 and l2 which talks about which food is to be done so this is about items chosen in h1 till now this is items to be cooked in h2 what else is sir, that what? Uh, then uh, yes sir. i was saying this one then on this much only sir i was actually i no no but you, you know this is your final solution hmm. you you have to start with the original set of items and for this original set of items why aren't others participating you all did not submit the assignment kya hua i have to start asking is it Submitted, but uh, this question was means I was not able to. Right. So attempt to perfectly. Yeah. So then is f f da f so f left. Let us call it f c, which is the set of items, set of food items. yet to be chosen for cooking and from these two you can derive what can you derive so these are these are items in h1 chosen for cooking items in h2 to be cooked already chosen and from these two what do you get you get t1 which is the total time cooking time already chosen in l1 t2 already chosen in l2 so this is total cooking time already allocated to h1 which is derived from the elements of l1 this one is the total cooking time already allocated to h2 derived from l2 
Is it clear to everybody what we are doing? Anybody confused? So it's fine. And how would you call it? How would you call it? Initial call? Sir, uh, MD, MD, then F and Nine. then zero, 00. Correct, correct. Null, null, F, original F, zero, 00. Who has done this in the assignment? Anybody did it this way? OK, now let us come to my base condition. Once I once I have done this. So what is my base condition? Uh, so if uh, FC is empty, right? Then return. This is if. FC equal to null. Return. What? Max of T1 and T2. Very good. Max of T1 and T2. Any other base condition? Good. Are you getting some background music coming around in the sound? So there is all the Saraswati Puja mics all around. Any other base condition? Anybody? No, sir. Now write down the recursive condition. Tell me. What is the recursive condition? Choose one from either L1 or L2 yes. and uh, no, 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 you not L1, L2, L1, L2 is already allocated, Baba. Or L1 and L2 are already allocated. Whom do you have to choose from? FC, FC sir. FC, FC. Correct, correct, correct. Choose. Choose. FI element of FC. And then. Add it to cooker one, then check the time, then to cooker two. Right, right. So y1 is equal to what is the recursive call? Cook time. L1 plus fi. L1 plus fi. L2 fc minus. fc minus fi. T1 plus and hi. T1 plus h1 plus i. H1 I T2. T2. Yes, sir. And Y2? Somebody else tell me what to write here? L2 plus L2 F. And then, what is my recomposition function? Some minimum. Who has not understood? Clear to everybody? Akshay Mandal? Yes, sir, clear. Now, what are the next steps in our algorithm design framework? Proof what are we supposed to do? Time complexity. Yeah. <laughs> So for next step in our this one is 
proof of correctness. This will come from simple induction. induction. This will come from simple induction principle, isn't it? This will come from the simple induction principle. Then what is the next step that we have to do? Uh, time complexity analysis. Time complexity analysis. So now what is the recurrence equation? Tn is equal to 2tn minus 1. 2tn minus 1 plus 1. So this comes to exponential. Hmm? How much? Exponential. Very, very simple. Order 2 to the power. Yeah, tell me the exact expression. Exact. Uh, 2 to the power uh, n minus 1 by. Yeah, 2 to the power n minus 1. 2 to the power n minus 1. What is the exact expression for this? Aditya Chari? Yes, what sir. Is, what is the exact expression of this? What are we doing? What is uh, What have we written? This time complexity, how does it come? Can you tell me? Uh, yes, sir. Like... Uh, Basically, in a recursive equation, we are uh, like we are doing recomposition and we are getting two t, t of n minus one statements okay. and uh, we are adding a constant. And now we are finding the where does the constant come from? Uh, the time, uh, the uh, sir, can you repeat it? Where does that constant come uh, from? Plus one, basically, we are returning uh, y and uh, yeah, that minimum and, computation of minimum. Uh, yes, sir. Com yes, sir. So, so uh, now you get this recurrence equation. What uh, is yes. the solution to this recurrence equation? Uh, solution to this. Uh, I think it's 2 power n. I mean, 2 power n minus. Do it, do it. All of you do it and tell me the exact answer. Uh, yes, sir. All of you open up the recursion and do it. And what is the base condition of this recurrence? T1 is equal to? What is the base condition of this recurrence? T1 is equal to? One. 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 So what is the value of this record? This is so straightforward. 2 to the power n minus 1. Are Baba, open up the recursion, all of you. If you, are, if you are so lazy, then how will it work? Sai Sarath, what is the solution? Sai Sarath, are you there? Gaurav Jha? Yes, sir. Uh, what is the solution to this recursion? Sir, actually, I am doing it, sir. Ishan? Sir, isn't it too, like, you are asking the full expression in terms yeah, of... Yeah, final k. expression. I mean, in terms of k. In terms of n, t n, where is k here? Uh, 
no no like like t of n equals to 2 power k times t power n y t of n minus k plus like that so 2 power n plus 1 minus 1 minus 1 So two to the power n minus one plus n into n minus one by two. I don't know why are you all getting stuck. This is such a standard recurrence. If you all cannot solve this recurrence, can you not just open it up in one step? You will get the answer. I am very surprised actually. That you all cannot solve this simple recurrence. Can you convince yourself that this answer is correct? Who gave this answer just now? Uh, Meetha sir. Meetha. Sir, yes, this this seems to be correct. Anybody who has a doubt about this? Gadipali Sri Swaksha. Sir, ah, huh. sir, like if I substitute n equals to two, then uh, the first, like the above equation, like two and t of n equals to two t of n minus one plus one, hmm. that gives me three, but the below expression gives me seven. How does it give you seven? Like two part three equals eight, and eight minus one is seven, I think. So t of one is not one in this case. Then what is t of one? It's three. Yep. Why is two one three? I mean, in the recurrence is not in coming one. Well. The recurrence no, is no. The the base condition is what? What is the base condition? So the basic condition is one. Like I mean, t of n is. I mean, sorry. Uh, t of one is one, but correct. Then? We substitute n equals to two in the above equation. It's coming three, but in the below. What like she said, it comes seven. So so so, what is the answer to this? It would be n minus one, sir. It's like it would be n, not n plus one. Or n minus one. Ah yes, two yes, power n minus one. Two power. So what I'm getting is two power n minus one plus uh, n minus one something. Plus one. A two power n minus one plus one. Two power n minus one plus one. So not n minus one. Two to the power n then minus one. Two to the power n minus one. Minus one. Yes, sir. This is not right. Okay. Yes. So now you will tell me, is this right? Yes, sir. I am getting this. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So this is two to the power n minus one. Can you tell me another problem where uh, this recurrence came? Very simple problem. All of us know. Very famous problem. Fibonacci. No, no. Fibonacci to is f n plus f n. Ah, uh, Fibonacci f n is equal to f n minus one plus f n minus two plus. Yes, yes, yes. That is not Fibonacci. Yes. Where does this this identical recurrence come? Tell me, somebody, where does this identical recurrence come? Do you get a hint from here? Inclusive, exclusive, inclusive. Tower of Hanoi. Tower of Hanoi. Tower of Hanoi. The Tower of Hanoi. How many of you do not know this problem? Please raise your hand. Everybody knows Tower of Hanoi. Does anybody not know Tower of Hanoi? Ishan Daga, are you there or not? 
So um, I am present, but actually today there is a function going on near my home. I'm <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Uh, Apur Modak. Yes, sir. I'm there. Yeah. So do you know the Tower of Hanoi problem? Yes, sir. So how how do we solve? Let us just do a little bit of a diversion. Let us do how to solve Tower of Hanoi. What is the solution? Sir, uh, the, the problem asks us to like put all all the three pegs in uh, another. So, uh, correct, correct, correct. So we have. A peg, B peg, C peg. I am to move all the end disks. From peg A to peg C. OK, I am to move all the disks from peg A to peg C. And I can use peg B, correct? So my tower of Hanoi. Uh, sorry. My tower of Hanoi problem. So my tower of Hanoi problem is defined as. T O H. There is a from peg. There is a two peg and there is a via peg, isn't it? And so one more argument I missed. What is the other argument I missed? The number of disks. Correct. Are you all with me? Say yes or no, please. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So let us now just quickly do a diversion because we have come to a very similar problem. Three peg, n disk, tower of Hanoi. So what is my base condition? What is my base N condition? One. Yeah, only N one peg equal is to one. So my answer is. Move. The disk from the from peg to the two peg. This is what is my action, right? My action is return. Action A is return the L. There's only one list to be formed which says move the disk from peg to two peg and return L. You form a list of size L and this return L. Is everybody with me? Kartik Sahu? Yes, sir. Hmm. Now come to the recursive condition. So this is the base condition. Come to the recursive condition. What is the recursive condition? I'll get a set of moves by calling L1 and L2. What is L1? So we move the N minus one disk from. Uh, you move N minus one disks from the from peg to the via peg using the two peg. Yes. And Ritam, what is L2? What do I do next? So L2 is uh, move the. Mm, so like on the nth peg. From oh, sorry, right? Yes. OK, that one. OK, via. No, 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 from no, 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 what you said is right. Our first move is. Yes, sir, in between there will be a step. After. Yes, we will have three lists. Yes, sir. L1 will be TOH. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. From peg, via peg, using the two peg n minus one. Then L2 will be yes, the sir. list move. 
the disk in the connect to the from peg whatever is remaining in the from peg will be moved to the two peg and l3 will it's come from toh yes what from from via peg two peg via to two yeah. using the from peg from n minus 1 and finally using you will from peg. l equal yes. to l1 concatenate l2 concatenate l3 and return l yes sir is this clear to everybody yes sir yes sir good so this is how we solve and you get identically this equation tn is equal to 2 tn minus 1 plus 1 which is 2 to the power n minus 1 though this is called the tower of hanoi are you aware of the legendary story or surrounding this problem it is also called the tower of brahma yes why anybody can guess anybody can tell me why what what is the legendary story of this what is the legend it says that lord brahma who is the creator of the universe solves this how many disk problem how many disk problem does lord brahma supposed to solve here three peg how many disk 64 disk problem then you 64 yes three peg 64 disk problem and how much time he requires to make one move of one move is equivalent to nobody knows lavender kaur are you there one second sir i have heard it like it predicts the age of the universe but i don't exactly remember how one day he says that lord brahma all that lord brahma does this is the legend is solves the 64 disk tower of hanoi problem and makes one move per day this is just a mathematical uh, uh, you know story conceptual story and therefore the total number of moves so the last move is made on the 264 2 to the power 64 minus 1th day and at that point what is supposed to happen is complete structure p r a and three more letters so l a y correct so if somebody says that this is approximately the lifetime of the universe and there is lot of arguments about this but whatever this is the story it is uh, written in some uh, mythological legend or somewhere some mathematician must have made up this story whatever good so coming back i heard it that it is present in ashvishwanath 
people say hundreds of things. No, that is another thing, you know. Oh, that is another thing. If you notice that in many of our uh, temple structures, have you noticed that in many of our temple structures, you have an idol or a or a or a some like people say it's a shivalinga or something, and above that, what do you have? What drops? One by one, water drops, or yes, milk sir. drops, or something drops. So you know what was this at that time? And when it becomes empty, then some period. So this is actually like an hourglass, you know. So this was a famous thing which was done by Varaha Mihira, a mathematician who used to, you know, uh, present concept of time counting and all that through this funnel funneling system. Very interesting. After that, a lot of mythology has come, but uh, much of it is embedded by, you know, these stories are developed by mathematicians who develop these artifacts because that time, you know, all this was all integrated. Anyway, let us come back to our uh, actual, the thing that we are really interested to do today. And we are doing this cooking problem. We found that the total time complexity is 2 to the power n minus 1. And by we do, as a bifurcation, we said that it, it is similar to the Tower of Hanoi problem, etc. Et now, coming back to our cooking problem, what is the next thing in the algorithm design? Next. What are we supposed to do? What are we supposed to check? Data structure to make it efficient. No, no, before that. See, we have, we have in the, the record a node, and we are choosing an element and we are putting it in cooker H1 or in cooker H2, and we are creating something like this. And whatever solution we are getting, we are taking the minimum after the solution of this and the solution of this and my recomposition function is sorry, maximum. We did we wrote max too, I hope. No. Why did we write min? Ah, uh, min. Min, min, min. There's the minimum of the time. Minimum min. of the time taken in right, both right, the right, cases. Right, right. Minimum, minimum, minimum. Minimum, minimum. It's all minimum, right? So it's minimum. Minimum. Now, what is the next thing we are going to look for? In our algorithm design step, after the decomposition, two things we look for. What are the two things we look for? Depth of recursion tree. Yeah, the so depth of the recursion tree is obviously n, isn't it? So identical subproblems. Correct, correct. Yes, sir. Very good. Remember all this, Baba. So we examine whether identical subproblems arise or not. So let's come back to our definition and check whether identical subproblems will arise or not. So when will identical subproblems arise? In our here, 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 based on this, how do we say? Two nodes will be same if what is same? Somebody suggest what is same? If two nodes are to be same, what is same? The 
L1, L2, and Now suppose L1, L2 max, are different. Max of T1, T2. Max of T1, T2. Max of T1, T2. Uh, see, whatever we have at first thing, what, what has to be identical? To, so what has to be identical in so what is the check? What are the checks? Tell me a simple check. Tell me a set of simple checks. FC has to be the same. That is the, the remaining set is the same. Isn't it? Two such, I have two such sub problems created, and my sub problems are of this type. So my sub problems S1 and S2, and S1 and S2, what are their parameters? What have I chosen here? What have I called them? L1, L2, FC, T1, T2. Okay. So let us say L1, 1 for S1, L2, 1, FC, 1, T1, 1, T2, 1. This is L1, 2. This is L2, 2. This is FC, 2. This is T1, 2. This is T2, 2. These are two sub problems. When will we identify them as identical? That means that the solution, what do we mean by identical? The solution below them will be the same. Solving any one of them is enough for me. I don't need to solve the other. So all L1s and L2s and FC must be the same, but um, I, I cannot think of a situation where such a condition would hold. Okay, let us, let FC me give one you... and FC. Right, right, tell me FC1 is equal to FC2, then? T1, T2, T1, 1 and T1, 2 are equal and T2, 1 and T2, 2 are equal. Is this what you are saying? Yes, sir. Very good. Aren't these identical sub problems? Yes, they are, sir. Hmm. They are identical, sir. Irrespective of what is there in L11 <laughs> and L21. Oh, my Correct. What is the next thing you will see? What is the next thing you will try to check? What is the next thing you will try to check? So are there any cycles? Maybe. Uh, okay, let me ask. So are there any cycles? Cycles won't be there because we are just adding, increasing the time of each. No, no cycles. Good point. Anyway, these are point to check. Anything else? Can we make a Fill up this blank. Greedy choice. Correct.
if we can make a greedy choice then the complexity of the algorithm will collapse from Two to the power n minus one to order n. Order n, perfect. It will become order n. Is it clear to everybody? Mohit Jha. If we could, if we could make a greedy choice for every element, instead of choosing this one and the instead of running both, if by some mechanism we could analyze that I can do this one and not that this one. Then it would be possible. Can anybody tell me some conditions under which we can make greedy choices? Sir, uh, we can add uh, the uh, H1 to T1 and H2 to T2 and then compare it and then check and then call the problem. So, so you're saying that I will look at which one, which cooker takes less time and I will put it in that cooker? No, sir. I am saying like uh, we are passing... First, we are uh, adding the cooker, the food in the respective cooker. Mm -hmm. So instead of adding uh, this and then calling it, what we can do is we have T1. Mm -hmm. uh, we can add the H1 time there and in T2 add H2 and compare it there only. And then uh, which one is minimum? Add that. Uh, so F1. that means that means you are going to see if I add this item in cooker one or I add this item in cooker two, what will happen to the max? That means will the max uh, be better in cooker one or in cooker two, isn't it? Hmm. Yes, sir. If that you do, if that you do, will you be able to guarantee? So this is a good choice, good idea. Your Your idea is that I have cooker one, cooker two. I'll try to put it in. So and now currently I have T1 and T2. I'll try to put it in T1 and see what happens to T1. And I'll try to put it in T2 and see what happens to T2. And I will see what happens to the max. And whichever max is lower, I'll put it there. Is that what you're saying? Yes, sir. Yeah. Very good sir, thought. Unfortunately, it will not work for this problem in the general case. Oh, okay, sir. It will definitely work for this problem in some special cases, but in the general case, it will not work. But this is a very good algorithm when we want to find a fast solution, which is not optimal. But this is this will lead to what is called an approximation solution, which we shall see later. Uh, but this problem is such that you will not be able to make a greedy choice in the general case. Why? That we shall come to later. There is a very interesting proof for that. And if you can get hold of that uh, uh, proof, uh, remind me later on one day to, to do that proof. But I can, you know, I'll, I'll just give you an idea that why this problem is like this. So this is a very, very interesting uh, idea about how to get it, but this is a this is a good problem. Does anybody have any other uh, suggestion of a greedy choice? This Abhishek, what Abhishek said is a very good idea, but uh, in this case it will not work. Any other suggestions on how to make it work?
Okay. After seeing that we cannot make a greedy choice, what is the next step that we have to do? Memorization. Huh? What is the next step? Uh, we can remember uh, if a uh, state is uh, reached, a uh, particular stage is uh, reached before, and instead of calculating the entire. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's all right. So identical sub problems we have discussed. A state is reached before is identical sub problem. Now we will start solving the problem in what manner? You remember in the coins problem, we started solving in a depth first manner. We start like this. Then we go here. Then we go here and we found a solution. Our initial solution cost was. Infinity, right? Current best was infinity. As soon as I get a solution S1. The current best will become S S1. And at any node. I will apply what? We have discussed this. Pruning. Very good. Very good. Pruning. And what will be my pruning condition? So if T1 plus T um, exceeds the current so let, let T equal to max of T1, T2 at a node. We will prune if What what will we prune? T is greater than current best. T is greater than equal to current best. Is it clear to everybody? At any point we will check what is the larger of the T1 T2. And if that larger of the T1 T2. Is greater than the current best. We don't need to go below that node. Rana Krajpal, is that clear to you? Ranak is not there. Manav Vadhan? Yes, sir. Clear, na? Yeah. So can anybody even improve on that? To improve on that, you need a conceptual diagram which I will show you and this conceptual diagram will give you an idea how to improve. Are you finding this interesting or not? Yes, sir. So the conceptual di diagram is like this. There are two cookers. I have consumed so much time in cooker one. And I have consumed so much time in cooker 2. This is H1, this is H2. And I have a remaining set of elements FC. Till now, according to Ishan, this is T. This is T1, this is T2, and this is T, which is the max of T1, T2. And I have a very clear pruning condition. If T is greater than equal to current best. Then I don't need to see any further. But suppose T is not greater than equal to current best. Then is there something I can do? So that is something I will leave for you because that is a little advanced. But now we have done the whole problem and we have found that this is a problem which is of exponential complexity. And. There is a case of identical sub problems and we cannot apply the greedy approach. 
but we can apply pruning. Having come this far, like we saw that the Tower of Hanoi is a problem similar to it, this cooking problem is similar to what other problems? It is in the class of what class of problems? Can you tell me? It is in the class of problems called scheduling. Scheduling of independent tasks. This is a famous class of problems where you have got a set of tasks. I have put two cookers, but in general there can be many cookers. Which means these cookers are what? Processors of the tasks. OK. These cookers are processors of the tasks. And because these cookers are processors of the tasks. Therefore, we are to run these tasks on processors. You will have this problem coming up in hundreds of cases. And scheduling of independent tasks is a very interesting problem. Then there are dependent tasks and things like that, which we shall come to. Later on, we shall see certain cases of tasks have uh, greedy algorithms to also work. Any questions on this uh, problem? Excuse me, sir. Yes. Uh, sir, actually, I wanted to know the proof of correctness by induction, like okay. the exact arguments. Okay. So, can anybody help about with the proof of correctness by induction? Lavinder has asked this question about the proof of correctness by induction. Can anybody help? So for a, uh, for n equal to one, we just have h11 and h12. Yeah. Sorry, h21 so, and h11. So we are taking the maximum. Right. We so Lavinder, is that you no? Know, wait. Induction requires a basis condition. All right. Lavinder, is yes, that sir. okay? Yes. Sir. Yes. Sir. Okay. Very good, Arup. Next. We assume it for n, and then we prove. We for assume it for. Let us say we assume it for n minus one. So. Okay. So, good. So, Lavinder, we are now assuming that my initial set, which was FC, which has got n tasks, if I remove it, if I call it for n minus 1 tasks by induction, this method is correct. Okay, sir. Now, what have I done? I have taken this new task and called it onto these two. Once I have called it on n minus one tasks for the. For L1 by adding it to H1. The second time I have called it for n minus one tasks by adding it to H2. There are only two ways of doing it. Yes, sir. either I'll put it in H1 or H2 and then recursively I know that this recursive call will give me the optimal value of this recursive call. Correct. So now that it will give me the optimal value of n minus one elements, therefore the optimum value of n elements is also obtained by induction argument. Got it? Yes, sir. Because I know how to solve one less element, and where is that one less element coming? We are removing from FC. The size of FC is reducing. There are many ways to prove it by induction. Anybody else has any other question? OK, if you have no other question, then we will quickly go to. Which problem can you guess? Which is this problem? Uh, test. Ah. Test so, bullet test problem. How did you all solve? Binary, binary search. No, binary search. So definitely. 
binary search and what? How did you do the binary search? To find so, so the peak, uh, the middle point of the sequence for one particular list, uh, the mm. middle point of the peak uh, peak of the list will lie on the either right side of the peak or left side. Mm. So if it lie on the left side, the point in which peak lies, it will be increasing. Mm. And if it lie on the right, it will be decreasing. So from there, we can check and keep on reducing the so, length so, of. Uh, right. So you are going to call binary search recursively on L1 to LK, right? Yes, sir. I mean, uh, iteratively, one after another. You will call binary search on L1, then you will call binary search on L2. Is that what you are going to do? Yes. And then what will you do once you have got three elements from each? Then we can find the maximum of those three. Like first we find the maximum of the list, then remove it and then find maximum from the remaining. Max one, max two and max three. Okay. Anybody else has any other suggestion? Utkarsh Avasti, are you there? Vaishnavi Malwade, are you there? Yes, sir. Huh. How did you do, do it? Did you do it in the test? Yes, sir. How did you do it? Sir, using the function. Sir, actually the question was not a bit clear. So what I did was uh, what the strategy I was thinking was to uh, uh, calculate the peaks of each list and then uh, uh, find how, the top. How will you find the peak of each list? How will you find the peak of each list? Good. It's uh, that is exactly what your friend just said. They calculated the peak of each list. How did you find the peak of each list? So, so, so like the brute force can be that we can iterate through the list and find uh, the element at which the, ne uh, the next element is less than. But what did your friend just suggest? Can anybody tell what, what was the solution to find the peak of each list? Binary search. Binary search. You use binary search to find the peak of each list. Vaishnavi, is it clear? How yes. will you use binary search? You can anybody tell repeat how to use binary search to find the peak of each list? So um, we go to the, look at the middle the point. Finished. You yes, look at sir. the middle point. And then you check. What do you check? So whether it is increasing or decreasing. Yeah, you check the previous and next element, whether it is increasing or decreasing. If it is increasing, you call it on the left side or right side? So the right side. The right, right side. side. If it is decreasing, left you side. call it on the left side. And when do you know that it is the correct point? Uh, when the, the previous is decreasing and uh, uh, decreasing and the next is also decreasing. Vaishnavi, have you got it? Yes, sir. So by binary search, you can find the peaks of every list. Up to here is everybody. Anybody has a doubt? Sir, uh, I have a doubt actually. So yeah. uh, if if uh, we'll if the, 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 there there can be a case where uh, all the three max element could be in one single list. So if we compare only the peaks of all the list, then there, uh, we, no, no, we no, might that's what is, we, we have found the peaks. Once we have found the peaks, then we can return three elements of every list. Okay, so the, the three elements that are close close to the peaks Obviously, of the... Uh, the previous okay, and okay. the next will be the top three elements of the list. No? Oh, no. Okay, so all the three okay, all the three will be checked, right? With each other. For like, whenever you find the peak, you return all the three elements. Yeah, okay, we will return and store them in an array uh, of an no, no, you return all, all the three elements and we'll come to that part. Is okay, it clear okay. to everybody now? I've uh, what Manav asked that once you find the peak, 
your binary search does not return only the peak or the it returns all the three top elements or the point of the peak whatever but sir there there might also be a case where when when we are increasing uh, mm -hmm. the the three uh, the the second from the peak the second one from the peak, uh, increasing side uh, from the peak and the increasing side might be greater than the one yeah, which yeah, is coming yeah. so the, how much how many so comparisons how, you need to find to find uh, uh, first second third of three elements Uh, like we can check for the uh, peak one more and comparison on na? Yeah, you yeah. know so which is the peak check, right? you know yeah, which know is the peak. peak now you need one more comparison to find which is second and which is third okay okay okay, okay to find thing. which is second and which is third you need only one more comparison ha na yeah yeah okay sir thank you so so by so if each if if list l1 if list li is of size ni then in log and order log ni steps you can find the three elements got it manav y yes sir yes sir so if there are k lists uh, you can find it in how much time log of n1 plus log of n2 plus log of n3 etc etc so in the worst case uh, because the list may be skewed uh, it it will be order of what k log n if all the elements are of order n that means all the elements are of equal size and there are k set so each element is of n by k size then uh, you will get uh, n by k log of n by k so you will get k log n by k isn't it now yes, what sir. will you do now what will you do after you have found the top 3 elements of each list how will you find the top 3 elements of the total anybody so we make a binary search so and then take the list. top 3 yeah so all you need now need to do is make a binary search tree and in from that binary search tree you insert all the element the brute force way is insert all the three uh, so 3k elements you insert into the binary search tree and you then take out the top three elements the top three elements will be found by simple which order traversal depth first depth first that is in order traversal isn't it in order in order so in order to traversal up to 3 elements you will get the top 3 elements is it clear to everybody yes sir yes sir so all you need to do is now use a data structure you can always you know you can always find the max and the second max and the third max by a tournament or or uh, n minus 1 plus n minus 2 or whatever by recursive but as we have discussed this is just a generalization of whatever we had done in class all you now need to do is form a binary search tree as a data structure put all the elements in the binary search tree and get all whatever you want to get anybody has a doubt here medha Medha, is it clear? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Anybody has any other option? Any other solution? Does anybody have any other solution? can anybody do an improvement of 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 this binary search tree data structure sir 
so yeah so maybe we can just um check that if supposing by um when we're entering elements into the binary search tree mm. if the elements are not going to the um right then we can just refrain from putting them in because they're anyways not in the correct top correct tree. very good very good so now if i repeat what ishan has said has anybody understood what he has said yes sir yes sir that means he has said that you are inserting from every the top 3 elements of l1 l2 l3 l4 so you have entered up to l l, l5 you are now entering the top element of l6 and the top element of l6 suddenly become so you are always maintaining the top 3 elements is very easy to maintain the top 3 elements during insertion you can always know what are the top 3 elements because top 3 elements just goes down that binary search tree in log n time you know what is the top 3 elements because you just go depth first in in order traversal and finish the top 3 elements and that, that is where you know what is the top 3 elements now if the new element does not disturb the top 3 elements so l6's largest element is less than the top 3 elements then will you insert the next two elements no sir in fact we can even skip the top element of l6 then is it wait 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 ishan what one more minute is it clear anybody has a doubt lavinder have you understood what is going on yes sir so now you have found that the top element of l1 or l6 is less than the third last current element so you don't enter that element at all isn't it yes sir so you don't enter any element now let us come and see that the top element of l6 replaces the third element the current top third element then what do you do so replace and stop no my l7 will come l8 will come yeah so you replace it and stop that means you don't bother about the next or the next to next element yes sir manav vadan are you there in the class yes sir have you understood you have entered yeah. this and found that this is the this has dislodged the third element but this is not greater than the top or the second top once you know that it has dislodged yeah, yeah. the third element you don't need to do the others yes sir and if it dislodges the third element which element will you now remove from this binary search tree the third one will remove yeah the current third one you will remove hai na current third one will remove and this we will replace that so which means that the binary search tree at any point will contain how many elements so three. three three now that the binary search tree always contains three elements what is the complexity of constant. finding constant, yes, constant. got it yes so now that log in time of the binary search tree now becomes constant ritam yes sir got it dekho chhota problem but so you require to do binary search and this binary search tree now data structure reduces to a three element list 
and you only maintain the top three elements from each. You take three elements, compare. You take three, and can you do better than this? That is the next question. Isn't it interesting problem? Looks simple. Did you find this problem in Geeks for Geeks or somewhere else? Anybody? Is it there somewhere? I made up this problem by the way. Are you Rajendra Bhagyashi Sarma? Are you all there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are you following how to do yes, that? Sir. That the binary search tree will now need only three elements. Yes, sir. And that check is a constant time check. Yes, sir. Understood. Yes, sir. So the top three elements finding is order K. It is just order K time. So the overall complexity will be K log N. And you'll think if you can improve it further. So this is how we proceed in algorithm design. So that is why I wanted to discuss the solutions today. So that you know the answers and we have recorded it. So any any questions here? Any questions here? No, sir. Good, good. Okay, then I think we are done for today. We can stop the recording.